Hey guys, the cabinet's coming along nicely. I've been able to build up the chewed out edges. Just about done. I had a few voids I want to fill in from the JB Weld. But otherwise, it's just about done. Got that big old hole filled in and sanded down. And I did a little experiment with stripping off the paint using a citrus strip. It worked quite well. There's actually nice shiny Bakelite underneath. So if this had been an undamaged cabinet, potentially it could have been completely stripped and just left as the uh, unpainted Bakelite. But obviously it's been damaged, so it's going to get painted. And before I get too much further with that, I want to take care of a few things on the inside. I want to try to get that label off. Thank you for your suggestions on how to get that off. I will try some heat. That one should probably come off without too much effort. I want to try to get that cardboard speaker grill out. And there's that little light that was installed rather sloppily. It's at a bad angle. And fortunately, they used one of the speed nuts on the back. I'm going to try to clip that out without damaging the lens. And uh, I was informed by somebody online that the light bulb that shines behind that should actually have a hood on it with a, uh, an opening that uh, lines up with the lens. And yes, I did indeed uh, find some photos online of another chassis that had the shroud over the LED bulb. So I may try fabricating something. Now another thing I got a few comments on was about the chewed up edge and the suggestion was that somebody had to try to pry the cabinet open with a screwdriver not realizing there were screws underneath and I at first thought hey yeah that's a good theory except for one little problem the top has zero damage on it I don't see how somebody could put a screwdriver in there and pry it to the bottom without leaving a mark on the top. So, <laughs> that mystery uh, still goes unsolved. I'm uh, working on stripping off the paint on the top part of the cabinet right now. Now, earlier I tried using some citrus strip. I let it sit for a couple days. I ended up having to uh, use a wire brush to get it off. Well, so, I went to looking for tips online for getting this off and uh, one of you posted one about soaking in hot water for a while um, possibly but then I remembered something else that I'd done in the past on enamel paint which is to use oven cleaner this is the fume free type of easy off and uh, it's working really well let it sit for a few hours and then use a brush, brush and it's coming right off was still on there pretty stubborn in a few areas so now I'm trying some really scalding hot water and uh, I'm surprised at how well that's working too. Really softens up the paint. So yeah it's definitely better than using any uh, harsh chemical strippers.
those of you patiently wondering what I was going to do to repair the damaged drum, well, here's an update. Uh, so there was something loose rattling around inside. Well, while poking around trying to fish that out, something else broke off. So then there were two pieces rattling around inside, and I decided, you know, it's time to really just get in there and once and for all see what's going on. So, cut a hole in the end. At first I tried going around this where it looks like there's a seam or may have been glued or heated and pressed together, but that was getting me nowhere, so I just went for it and just used a hot knife. Uh, the stuff melts fairly easily, a little bit pungent, but it melts easily and just... And here's what I found inside. So the fluted part was comprised of three pieces and one of those broke off and then the metal collar broke off. I don't know which broke off first, but those were definitely the two things were rattling around inside. Great. How do I fix it? Well, uh, I'm not too concerned. I, I know I can glue this back in and I can file it down. I'm going to be repainting this anyway, so that part doesn't really phase me. Um, but to build that back up, well, I think what I'll do is just break off the remaining two pieces and maybe get a piece of plastic tubing and heat up a knurled shaft a little bit and press it into it. I think that uh, may be the easiest way to go. I also got a suggestion to take a knob, a sacrificial knob that's the right inner diameter that's made for a fluted shaft and kind of carve that up and put it in there, which is also definitely a possibility. But a uh, mystery finally solved. And I know there's at least one other owner of this particular model who's facing the same issue. And uh, I'm curious to see what solution he comes up with. Maybe something a little less drastic. But hey, I figured uh, for the sake of my own curiosity and all the viewers out there, we now know what is inside one of these. See if I can get some light and we can see inside there a little better. And let's see if I'm trying to use my phone flashlight. As for the cabinet, finished up all the repairs, pretty much got all the damaged edges repaired. I'm going to do a little more sanding on that one corner. I think that will be that. Did a little test spray just to see how this paint right here. And it adheres extremely well. That's even without any primer. However, I did buy some primer. I think that would be a good idea because there's still going to be some fine uh, defects where these cracks are, so I'm going to want to prime this and sand it down maybe a couple times to really blend out all the flaws and spray the whole thing and then rub in some gold paint into the flutes here and the Filco logo and then mask that all off and paint this gold so, still a fair amount of work to do, but a lot of progress. Still curious how the heck this got damaged, such at the top had no damage and the bottom was so chewed up.